What's going on internet? IG here again with another Linux distro review back from holidays. Today we're going to be having a look at Solus OS 1.2 Everlean. So what is the differentiation between Solus OS and all of the vast myriad of Debian based distributions that are out there today? Well, it really comes down to GNOME 2. GNOME 2, of course, is an old desktop uh, environment that has been used uh, for a long, long time and it's been developed for a long, long time. But of course, it then froze and got uh, succeeded by GNOME 3. GNOME 3, of course, had its hate mail uh, severely attached to it. And so many users were stuck with uh, wanting to know what, what desktop environment they could use that would bring back the functionality that GNOME 2 provided. Solus OS enters the scene and now we have a distribution that is based on Debian Stable uh, and GNOME 2. So in that sense it is a distribution that is based on packages that are a few years old but at the same time it does update the key ones so that you're not left behind when it comes to desktop applications. Therefore of course we have latest versions of Firefox and Thunderbird and you've got a relatively up-to-date kernel uh, but it, it's the Linux kernel 3.0 but it's not anything uh, cutting edge by any stretch. So really Really, this distribution is geared towards people that want to use a desktop operating system that doesn't require a whole lot of upkeep. It's not going to require too much maintenance at all. The packages are very stable. You're not going to get too, uh, too many crashes or anything like that. And also, you're not going to have to deal with too many dependency uh, problems. So let's have a poke around and see if this distribution is worth you installing. Okay, so here we are in Solus OS 1.2 Eveline. Now, as you're going to notice, this, this distribution looks at kind of similar to what Linux Mint did uh, before, its, uh, before its migration to GNOME 3 and uh, then subsequently Cinnamon. You can see here the menu is the Cardapio menu, uh, which has been used by various distributions, including Ping iOS uh, in the past. And uh, it's just very well categorized and it's gonna make sense to a Windows user very nicely indeed. Uh, now that really brings me to the, I guess the purpose of this distribution from what I've gathered uh, from reading the, the, the info on their website, so forth and so on. They're really wanting to be a stable desktop uh, operator system for those who want a uh, just who want a stable system that's going to run software and it's going to get work done with minimal uh, upkeep in that vein they are trying to present a stable bunch of packages and then they present you with some nice user-friendly applications here to get your job done uh, now of course they do use gnome 2 in their legacy version and of course they are working on solus os 2 which will integrate gnome 3 because it kind of has to after a period of time but for those who aren't comfortable with that you still have Solus OS here to play around with and GNOME 2, all the benefits that that brings, including add to panel. For me, this is one of those things that, uh, that I very much wish that GNOME 3 and the more recent desktop environments put into practice because this is a, a really a, a buzzkill feature for, uh, for GNOME 3. Just being able to throw in these uh, widgets on the panel to your heart's content, but the fact that you can do those things here because you are running GNOME 2, you're not running a fork, you are just running straight up GNOME 2, uh, there are a lot of benefits to that. As I said, applications have been uh, updated here as well, uh, so you're not just running very old versions of these applications. You can see here we've got uh, Cheese, Gnome M Player, Mini Chew, Movie Player, Open Shot Video Editor, Rhythmbox VLC, which is sitting at 2.0 something or rather, I'm pretty sure. You can see here, uh, the although I've got this running under VirtualBox, it is still running pretty fast indeed. You see it's running 2.0.1. And uh, so that it, it's going to handle all of your video playback out of the box, no worries at all. And of course, it covers most of your internet uh, needs here, including Dropbox, which I give it a thumbs up because I use it every day. Pigeon Instant Messenger, can't get any better than that. XChat IRC, Mozilla Twins. And of course, LibreOffice 3.6, which is again quite impressive. Uh, 3.6 is pretty much the latest uh, LibreOffice is at the moment as far as stability is concerned. So here we are in LibreOffice, uh, of course, very capable office suite that just keeps on getting better and better with every release the Document Foundation put out. And then now I'm just gonna cover a very fundamental element of Solus OS, and that is the Nautilus uh, file browser. They've actually taken Nautilus as it stood in GNOME 2, uh, a quite a cluttered uh, environment with a, with a fair bit of mess as far as these uh, categorizations here on the side, personal devices, network, etc. Uh, and they've really cleaned it up 
and uh, I guess in a sense forked Nautilus to to their own needs, but much more along the lines of what uh, of what the Elementary Project did with uh, the Nautilus file manager in the past. Uh, so, but now this this package is available through the Web Update PPA. So if you're running any Ubuntu-based distribution, you can get this look and feel of Nautilus, uh, which I have done uh, because it, it is again it's one of my favorite layouts. Uh, Nautilus Elementary, before they decided uh, decided to develop their own file manager, uh, is a very efficient file manager and it looks quite nice as well as you can see here. Of course we are borrowing the elementary icons here as you've probably guessed by now and I think distributions worldwide uh, credit a lot to the elementary team for the work that they have done in the past. Having said that there is nothing surprising about this user environment at all. You have window controls on the right as you would expect. You have window menus in the window as you would expect. You have a menu in the bottom left. You have notifications and controls in the bottom right. Clock, time and date. Really this distribution is very predictable and it, you'd be very safe to give this to a new user in my opinion. Now some other interesting tools that we do have thrown in here as well, we do have the inclusion of Wine so you can install uh, you can install a selection of Windows games and software through that compatibility layer. Again it's not foolproof but it does a pretty decent job. You can see when we open up the system uh, monitor here, you can see it's only using 235 megs of RAM and this is a 64-bit operating system. So it's very, very light, very lean and very quick to open. Continuing on through the system list here, system tools, you'll notice that it's got these two interesting entries, Service Pack Creator and Software Log Viewer. Now Service Pack Creator is a very interesting tool that really needs to be integrated across Linux systems. Is it the ability to back up the archives of packages or, or programs that you've downloaded and, uh, and back them up to a, specific, uh, to a specific folder so you can transfer them from system to system without having to download new packages each and every time. So very nice tool there. And then also we have the software log viewer, which ultimately does what it says it does. Uh, it just logs which software has been used by what user and where and how it's been changed, etc. It's also worth noting that their control center here, you can see you've got personal category here with uh, any, any personalizations that you might want to make to the system. Look and feel, you can uh, configure Compiz or Emerald theme manager here, as well as a simple Compiz, uh, Compiz config manager. And you can see add or remove software, you've got the basic GNOME add remove software. Now again, I've had gripes about this in the past, but there's really not a whole lot uh, that there's really not a whole lot that you can do about it. It works admirably and it gets the job done, but it, it could be a little bit easier. But one other strong point that I do need to add is that it does, uh, it, Solus OS have developed a, a first run wizard for those who have come to the distribution for the first time and need a bit of a walk around. You can see here that it's got links to the website, forums, chat, and the official guides or the official wikis. Uh, it helps you set up your networking con connection. It helps you set up your firewall settings. Uh, it can help you set up your uh, any graphics drivers that you might need to download, which is very, very helpful. You can also set up your software updates, how long, uh, how often you want them to update and when. And then it gives you the opportunity to donate there as well. This first run wizard, I, I reckon, is a, is a big thumbs up for the Solus OS team because more Linux distributions need a first run wizard like this. Overall, the strong points of this distribution are the fact that it is a legacy desktop environment in that uh, users that have been using uh, computers for some time and have a particular workflow that they did like in GNOME 2 can easily achieve it here again through Solus OS uh, and its implementation of GNOME 2. It is well supported, it is based on Debian, so you do have a vast software repository available at your fingertips. There is a decent selection of software installed by default and it seems to be a distribution that is very lightweight and performs very well. What are its weak points? Its weak points are the fact that it, the, the software can be antiquated in some cases. In most cases, the team are doing a fantastic job at keeping relevant desktop ap applications and programs up to date. But at some stage, you are going to run into, uh, you won't be able to run that latest version of a particular ap uh, application or program just because you are running on Debian stable. Now I will qu quickly correct myself as far as the Linux kernel is concerned because it is running Linux 3.3.6 as opposed to 3.0 like I said in the intro. They were having issues with uh, the 3.3.6 kernel, but they seem to have solved those now and rolled it into the updates. So at the end of the day, Solus OS is a perfectly decent desktop operating system, albeit you are running GNOME 2. That has its pros and cons, and it's up to you as the user to decide whether you want to use it. Well done on the Solus OS team, because they've produced a very workable distribution here for an audience that isn't always the easiest to please. Hardware support is fantastic, the Debian base is very solid indeed, and you can't ignore the speed and stability 
of where this distribution has come from. All right, so it's a pretty interesting distribution, isn't it? I'll put links for downloads in the doobly-doo. And of course, I am gonna be reviewing my Nexus 7 tablet that I got a while back. Obviously, I have been in and out of town for the last uh, about a month now. So uh, hopefully we'll regain some stability and we'll get onto that review as, as soon as we can. And of course, that would include Android 4.1 Jelly Bean. And then I will start kicking off the series of decent Android apps that I've found. Obviously, I've done desktop Linux uh, app reviews over the uh, over the last couple of months. I've also done distro reviews uh, dating quite a ways back. But I really do want to start looking at some decent free Android uh, apps out there as well. There are some that are going to be open source. There are going to be some that will be proprietary. Uh, but we'll have a look at the decent free ones out there. Maybe even the ones that you need to pay for just because there are a lot of people using Android now. That does not mean by any stretch of the imagination I am going to be forsaking uh, Linux and the open source world. So you can continue to look forward to more Linux distro reviews and app reviews, but I also do want to start looking at the Android thing a bit more seriously as its market is expanding quite quickly. If we get a bit of crossover from those two, wonderful. Thank you all once again for your support and clicking and liking and sharing and doing all the fantastic stuff that you as an audience do. Subscribe if you like this kind of content and feel free to leave comments below as to why you think GNOME 2 is a decent operating system. The sort of features that need to cross over from GNOME 2 to GNOME 3 in order for you to be satisfied because I know there are quite a few out there and if the GNOME team happened to see it then thumbs up for everyone. Thank you so much for watching and I shall see you again next time.